Yeah, man. We on a war path, man. This is a frequency war, man. We talking habeas corpse. Habeas corpse, man. The, the dead. The body. It literally means to have a body. Maybe it's the waking dead. Let go. We on the war path, man. The price is going up. Let go. Hey, man. It's time to get, uh, you know, focused, man. You know what I mean? Get part one. I tried to knock it out in one part, man. I got hot. Had to change shirts. I was supposed to be kicking it with my beautiful wife, Chef Candy. I said, man, I, I got I to gotta drop this part, too. She said, go ahead, baby, man. Go ahead and knock them out, man. Go ahead and make it happen, man. Go ahead and feed the flock, man. So... Y'all get that A-hop to ship candy, man. She's working hard on her cookbook, man, but she's taking it easy, man. Zion Cooking, man, is coming to you. You know, we're trying to drop it by summertime, man. So A-hop to ship candy, man, for those electric Trini recipes, man, for the most high, man. You know what I'm saying? Let go, man. So where were we, man? Where's my uh, magic briefcase? Oh, man. My uh, magic briefcase, man, for my for my time, for my time well well spent, my time well served, man. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is part two. So I didn't get to this last time, but I had all these wonderful, uh, you know, bonds, specialty bonds, you know, right off the government website. And, you know, Chef Candy sent it to all the brothers in there, man, so that we had to drop. And, you know, we was making copies of them, giving them out, man, leaving them. You know what I'm saying? Before I left, I made sure that a gang of copies was was out there, man. So, you know, hey, ha they got it right now. You know what I'm saying? The brothers got it right now, man. Also, hey, ha to Chef Candy for my tea. You know what I mean? Because she makes a fine tea, and I appreciate you. Hey, ha let go. Get that Zion cooking, man. Wednesdays, excuse me, Thursdays, man. You know, it's a lot of shows, man. We in the ether, man. It's the ether squad. Go ahead and click the link below so you got the live stream. Every day somebody's dropping some drop. We got about 17 total members. It's about to be 20 in a minute. You know what I mean? Some great new uh, comers coming into the to the ether. I look forward to introducing the drop nation. So it's about to, it's about to be at least 20. You know what I mean? And we're all. You know, enjoying the flow from the Dragon Sponsors, a hop. So let's go, man. Um, you know, support something that you're seeing literally manifest, man, in the water before your eyes, man. Battle tested. And uh, Hawa approved. Let's go. This is the wave. Who are you? We just talking habeas corpus, man. Let's go. Put my magic briefcase away. Okay, where were we? For real, for real, man, get part one, because we got half of this done. We got through half of this. And again, this is a habeas corpus that was put together by an attorney by the name of Thaddeus Culpepper, who himself was going through captivity, you know, fighting, you know, some other allegations of some other, you know, wire, some, you know, whatever he's going through. So, you know, but either way, He's, you know, seeing, he's starting to see the light, you know what I mean? He's starting to see the goal of, you know, connecting our indigenous culture with our Hebrew culture. And throughout all these conversations, we start talking about how this stuff equates in law, you know what I mean? How it equates with being the debtor, not the creditor. And then we came on the scripture, and the scripture really, you know, sparked it all off, man. So, Let's do the Stones edition, man. Let's dig on uh, some Deuteronomy 28. Wow, man. Dig on it, man. We on a war path, man. Price is going up, man. Hey, ha. Uh.
gotta dig on it. You gotta dig on it, man. You ain't here to dig on it, man. Then you already been dug. You already been dug. Or just come and dig on it, man. Get some precious jewels for the tribe. Let's get it. Now we in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And let's read through some of this and let's see how it applies, man. Let's go. I really want to get it from uh, 15 because, you know, you've been told that you're going to be the head, not the tail. Then you became the tail. So, you know, let's just get it, man. Let's get it like it's the first time. Then we're going to do the last six pages of this habeas corpus. All right. Then I'm going to show you what some of these bonds look like that you can look up on your own <clears throat> and you can dig on. And I said, you know, I didn't necessarily want this on the site. You know what I mean? Just because it's seen, you know, it, it, it's something... You know, that I really want you to be digging on if you're going to dig on. You know what I'm saying? I don't want people to just have it up so they can try to, you know what I mean? But this is something that's, if you really want the drop, like I said, email me music at 432thedrop.com. I might decide to put it up anyway. You know what I mean? If so, I'll just drop a link. You know what I'm saying? But let go. We're in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it, it will be that if you do not hearken to the voice of Hawah, your, your power to observe, to perform all his commandments, man, to listen, and all his decrees, decrees that I have commanded you today, then all these curses, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. <clears throat> so let's get it. Cursed will you be in the city. Cursed will you be in the field. Cursed will be the fruit, your fruit basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed will be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, the offspring of your cattle and the flocks of your sheep and goats. Cursed will you be when you come in and cursed will you be when you go out. A wild will sin in your midst. Attrition confusion, man, confusion, and worry in your every undertaking that you will do until you are destroyed and until you are quickly annihilated because of the evil of your deeds. For having forsaken me, Hawah will attach the plague to you until it consumes you from upon the ground to which you are coming to possess it. Hawah will strike you with Swelling lesions with fever, with burning heat, with thirst, and with the sword, and with wild blast, and with withering, and they will pursue you into your destruction. Don't, don't that sound like the Inquisition? Don't that sound like what we're reading about the Kumse War? Hawata, let's go. Your heavens over your head will be copper. And the land beneath you will be iron. Oh, I mean, what does that mean? I mean, it can't be a good thing. It's the curse. The heavens will be copper and the land will be iron. Instead of what? The heavens being gold. You know what I mean? Or the land being gold and the heaven being crystal. You know what I mean? Like, So now the heaven is copper. I mean, that's cold. You got to meditate on that. And the ground is iron, right? So when you're trying to, you know, get all this iron, we hear that they get the iron for the meteors and, and stuff like that. But now we're figuring out what this meteor business really is. And we're trying to put this iron thing. We, they say we're in the iron age. All right, let's go, let's go. So verse 23, your heavens over your head will be copper and the land beneath you will be iron. Hawa will make the rain of your land dust and dirt from the heaven, it will descend upon you until you are destroyed. Wow. Hawa will cause you to be struck down before your enemies. 
on one road you will go out against him but on seven roads you will flee before him and you will be a cause of terror you will be a cause of terror to all the kingdoms of the earth my naga they gotta be talking about you the savage the uh the black brute in every country you're the savage man you're the cause of terror and you're in a fierce spell which is why when we read stuff like this we like are you sure we should be reading this this is just too you know collateral primary creditors drop are you sure you want to share that look man I just recorded part one uh, I just started uploading it I've already had to reboot my Wi-Fi twice now I don't you know I thought I was just having internet issues I thought I was having regular internet issues whenever I was uploading I didn't put two and two together but me and Shep Candy man we we said last time like it seems like whenever you upload a YouTube video your Wi-Fi shuts down the, the, the whole entire thing just fails failure bang for it could be hours if you don't reboot it or sometimes you could reboot it reboot it and it still don't come on just by uploading a video onto YouTube I thought it was just a social media site it gotta be much more than that it ain't like you know you're uploading into another website this is this is just a website right so you're uploading into a website and it shuts down your entire Wi-Fi now you can go to work or do whatever and come back eight hours later and you only got 10% uploaded and then you got to reboot it then you go to sleep wake up now you got 17% uploaded see the folk out there you don't know what some of us got to go through just to upload a video by the time it gets to you it might be days or or just a whole day of your time babysitting your Wi-Fi <laughs> just to get the video dropped to you and they do that just to discourage us from dropping anything like I know I'm gonna have to reboot my Wi-Fi at least eight more times just to get part one out and I know this is gonna be another 10 12 times just to get this part out to you and they do that to slow down the information to do this to discourage you they cut our views off so if they say we got a thousand views we probably really got five thousand views ten thousand views you know what I'm saying that's why we don't care about the view situation because it's all a hoax anyway you know what I'm saying they say you got this many subscribers but then you know you know that they're deleting you know or, or unsubscribing people all the time so sometimes people got to resubscribe so the numbers is just a fluke that, that's why we in the ether with it man that's why we in the ether with it man so we don't care about the numbers over there or the analytics or statistics man we just surfing the wave man with those that are listening you know what i mean those that are really like all right i can listen separate than youtube i can come kick it with y'all in the ether because that's reality i don't have to witness through youtube you don't have to use youtube to witness but every time i upload something on youtube i witness my entire wi-fi internet shut down what does uploading on youtube have to do with my wi-fi at home so someone's clearly just pressing buttons you know what i'm saying or putting algorithms in shut down whenever X, Y, and Z. And how many other, you know, folks, so-called YouTubers are going through that. You know what I mean? So, you know, just respect the YouTubers out there and the folks that is in Drop Nation dropping this drop because it ain't easy to get it to you, for real, for real. They slow our stuff down. They slow it all down. You know what I mean? We go through personal attacks. We go through X, Y, and Z. And yet, Hawa anoints our heads with oil. You know what I mean? Because we're here for a reason. We're doing the right thing. We're speaking out. It don't matter if I got all the information or you got all the information, whatever the case is, you're speaking. You're putting action out. You know what I'm saying? You can't judge somebody past, you know, them seeing what they're doing. You know what I mean? When they're giving you the drop, you know, then just be grateful for it, man. That's all the drop nation. That's everybody, man, that you see giving the drop. I got much love for y'all. You know what I mean? For real, for real. So let's read a little more, man. We're in Deuteronomy 28. 21. For a while will attach the plague to you until it consumes you from upon the ground to which you are coming to possess it. For a while will strike you with swelling lesions, with feet, with fever, with burning heat, with thirst, with sores, with the sore, and with the blast, and with withering. And they will pursue you until, you, until your destruction. Your heavens over your head will be copper, and the land beneath you will be iron. Hawa will make rain of your land, dust and dirt from the heaven. It will descend upon you until you are destroyed. 
Hawa will cause you to be struck down before your enemies. On one road you will go out against him, but on seven roads you will flee before him, and you will be a cause of terror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your carcass will be food for every bird of the sky and animal of the earth, and nothing will frighten them. Hawa will strike you with the boils of Egypt, with hemorrhoids, with wet, with wet boughs and dry boughs, or boils, wet boils and dry boils, of which you cannot be cured. Hawa will strike you with the madness and with blindness and with confounding of the heart. You will grope at noontime as a blind man gropes in darkness, but you will not succeed on your way. You will be only cheated and robbed all the day. You'll be only cheated and robbed all the days, man. So we over here talking habeas corpus to say that we're being unlawfully cheated, unlawfully robbed of our lives, of our time. And this is just another avenue without signing no contract with no corporation. You know what I mean? It's the opposite of anything. It's putting the corporation on lean, on notice, like, I ain't got nothing to do with you. Matter of fact, here's a habeas because, you know, this is an official statement in your language that I'm filing a lien until you show me the proper accounting measures that, that we can talk turkey, that we can talk, you know what I'm saying, literally talk turkey, you know what I mean, talk Byzantine, talk Papal Bull, talk, indig talk indigenous naga. So we're going to read some more about this talk about the primary creditor, but let's get some more about the debtor and the creditor. We're talking the curses. But you'll be only cheated and robbed all the days, and there will be no savior, man. Where's your savior? Everybody's doubting your savior. Your, your savior even exists. They doubt Hawa exists, which is why Hawa literally means to exist. He exists. Hawa, your framer and shaper, they exist. You dig? You will betroth a woman, but another man will lie with her, man. You will build a house, but... You will not dwell in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will not redeem it. Your ox will be slaughtered before your eyes, but you will not eat from it. Your donkey will be robbed right from before you, man. You'll be robbed, not just your donkey, but everything. Your movable and, Im and immovable goods. Take, take all their kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dumb diverses. Let's go. But you will not eat from it. It will not return to you. Your, your flocks will be given to your enemies. And you will have no savior. Your sons and daughters will be given to another people. And your eyes will see and, pi and pine in vain for them all day long. But your hand will be powerless. A nation unknown to you. You're putting them on notice. This is what the habeas is. A nation unknown to you will devour the fruit of your ground and all your labor. And you will be only cheated and downtrodden all the days. Literally cheated of your days. Our brothers are being unlawfully detained and cheated and robbed of their lives, of their days, of the most precious commodity of their breath. And their families are broken unlawfully. That's why I'm sharing this through the Ruach, man. This is the first time I've, you know what I'm saying, through the Ruach, seeing anything what we call legal paperwork put together through the Ruach. To me, this was the first, the first time. I know there's other, you know, similar things that bros got and people sharing that's good but this is my first hand witness experience sitting there you know saying next to Thaddeus Culpepper and uh you know fighting for his life fighting for his innocence fighting for you know all the bros in there that was you know coming by man they'll stop by and look around you know it was a you know it was an interesting thing you know what I'm saying even the CEOs would have to come by and be like I see you guys got a whole entire law firm going on and that that because they know they were dealing with actual attorneys. And, you know, they were putting their minds together. It was crazy. I mean, really, yapa, man, to see these brothers and other folks working with them to put their minds together. You know what I mean? Just to break through the matrix in whatever language they can, you know, in that desperate situation. Most won't even see the light of day for a long time. So, you know, they're just being hopeful. Like, ah, right, yeah, read that Deuteronomy again to me, bro. All right, let's go. Because maybe this has something to do with you, my naga. Let's go. A nation unknown to you will devour the fruit of your ground and all your labor, and you will only be cheated and downtrodden all the days. 
you will go mad from the side of your eyes that you will not see you can't see clearly Hawa will strike you with a foul bow, boil on the knees and on the legs that cannot be cured from the sole of your foot to the crown. Hawa will lead you and your king whom you will set up over yourselves to a nation you never knew. Neither you nor your forefathers and there you will work for the gods of others. Moneta Juno of wood and stone, wood and stone. You already know how that you know, rely, relates to religion today, wood and stone. Let's go. You will be a source of astonishment, a parable, and a conversation piece among all the peoples where Hawa will lead you. All they do is talk about the Naga. You're the source of all entertainment across the world, man. You will take abundant seed out to the field, but you will harvest little. For the locusts will devour it. You will plant vineyards and work them, but wine, but wine you will not drink, and you will not gather in, and the worm will eat it. You will have olive trees throughout your boundaries, but you will not anoint. You will not anoint with oil, for your olives will drop. Your olives will drop. You will bear sons and daughters, but they will not be yours, man. For they will go into captivity. All your trees and your fruits of your ground, the chirping locust will impoverish. The stranger who is among you will ascend above you higher and higher. The stranger to your land ascend above you, ascended above you higher and higher. So where they are now is higher than they were when Tecumsa was fighting them in the 1800s. He was fighting them to keep them in check, right? Gog and Magog, keep the uh, hijack in check. But then after that, they just ascended, ascended higher and higher on this land and across the plain. We're talking about a virus. Let's go. Oh, man, we're talking about, we're talking about, you know what I'm saying, being healed. Man, we're talking about a healing dude. This is undeniable information. This is undeniable factual drop that we have been absolutely poisoned and a virus and the spell has been put over our eyes. And we are breaking free and seeing the light. And it's the first time I've witnessed it, you know, really connect to their so-called legal system in a different way uh, regarding this habeas, you know what I'm saying? And it's an interesting look, you know what I mean? But if anything, it just wakes us up to some information of, wait a minute, man. I'm the creditor, not the debtor. Let's go. This is my, this is my ether you're in. But I know why it's happening. So it's not like you're just getting, oh, I'm so mad. At, at, it's not to turn you into an angry fool. It's so that you see clearly, like, yeah, this this happened just as Hawa said it would. So what's the next step? To unite, to remember, to keep the commandments of the Creator, to keep the, the, the realities of the Creator. You know what I mean? This is a reality. You're in a grid. And there's certain things you do to exhale in the grid. One is that you keep your Sabbath because it brings you back into a checkpoint that the other nations don't have. It puts you into your own rhythm and it was kept before you even existed in this human form. In the higher octaves, it's a rest. It is the rest. It is the power. It is the weapon. Can't nobody hijack, you know what I mean, the... The original flow, the ancient love song, man, I love to miss D and the copper color awakening. Now check this out, it says, the stranger who is among you will ascend above you higher and higher while you descend lower and lower. He will lend to you. Now here's how we're getting into this, this habeas. What does it got to do with the habeas drop? You need the script so you see clearly. He will lend to you, but you would not lend to him. So before, you are the creditor. But now they're flipping the script to where instead of you lending to them and them being the debtor, now you're the debtor. Now what happens? Verse 44. He will lend to you, but you will not lend to him. He will be a head, but you will be a tail. 
All these curses will come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you have not hearkened to the voice of Hawah, your power, to observe his commandments and decrees that he commanded you. They will be a sign and a wonder in you and in your offspring. Man, ain't you still digging on it? It says forever because you did not serve Hawah, your power, amid gladness and goodness of heart when everything was abundant. You had everything already in abundance, man. You already had it. So, you will serve your enemies whom Hawa will send against you in hunger and in thirst and nakedness and, with, and without anything. And he will put an iron yoke on your neck, Naga. My Naga, you got an iron yoke. You had an iron yoke. You still got one today. You just don't see it. An iron yoke on your neck until he destroys you. Hawa will carry against you a nation from afar, from the end of the earth, as an e eagle, as an eagle will swoop. A nation whose language you will not understand, a brazen nation that will not be respectful to the old, nor gracious to the young. It will devour the fruit of your animals and the fruit of the ground until you are destroyed. It will not leave you grain, wine, or oil, offspring of your cattle or flocks. Don't this sound like the Inquisition? Don't this sound like the invasion that Teku Meshe is fighting? Let's go. Hawata is fighting. You're fighting, my naga. This is Deuteronomy 28. Now that you see clearly, you see this wasn't that long ago. This stuff is written. Describing you. It's more recent than you think. All this is more recent, man. The dragons, the floods, all of it. This just happened. This all just happened. You just got knocked out, put offline, reset, put back online. It just happened. Ain't no time. Let's go. It would devour the fruit of your animals, the fruit of the ground. We're talking about the, the virus, the invasion. Until you are destroyed, it will not leave you grain, wine, or oil, offspring of your cattle or flocks of your sheep and goats until it causes you to perish. It will besiege you in all your cities until the collapse of your high and fortified walls in which you trusted through Hawa. It will besiege you in all your cities and all your land which Hawa, your power, has given you. You will eat the fruit of your womb, the flesh of your sons and daughters, until Hawa, your power, which a while your power has given you in the siege and distress that your enemies will distress you. The man among you who is tender and very delicate will turn selfish against his brother. You know what I mean? So I'm talking about my situation with my brother and then we're just reading the prophecy. Let's go. The man among you who is tender and very delicate will turn selfish against his brother and the wife of his bosom and against the remaining children that he has let has let survive, not to give even one of them of the flesh of his children that he will eat, not leaving anything for him, in the siege and distress that your enemies will distress you in all your cities. The tender and delicate woman among you, who has never tried to set the sole of her foot on the ground because of delicacy and tenderness, will turn selfish against the husband of her bosom, and against her son and daughter, and against her afterbirth that emerges from between her legs, and against her children womb, she will bear, whom she will bear, for she will eat them in secret for lack of nothing in the siege and distress that your enemy will distress you in your cities, if you would not be careful to perform all the words of this Torah that are written in the book, in this book to fear this honor and awesome name, Hawa, your power, or to revere, to respect your daddy, respect your mama, respect your family, respect yourself, man. Not be in a fear spell, but to respect yourself and know that you are separate. You are something else. You are ether. There's ether rules, man. If you want to be ether, then respect the rules, man. Respect your father's house, man. Respect the reality of where you at and who you are. You don't get to recreate it. It's already been created. Get down and lay down. 
let go. Then Hawa will make extraordinary your blows and the blows of your offspring, great and faithful blows and evil and faithful illnesses. He will bring back upon you all the sufferings of Egypt, of which you were terrified, and they will cleave to you. Even any illness and any blow that is not written in this book of the Torah, Hawa will bring upon you until you are destroyed. You will be left few in number instead of having been like the stars of heaven in abundance, for you will not have hearkened for you will not have hearkened to the voice of Hawa, your power, and it will be that just as Hawa rejoice over you to benefit you and multiply you, so Hawa will cause them to rejoice over you to make you perish and to destroy you, and you will be torn from upon the ground to which you come to possess it. Hawa will scatter you among all the peoples from the ends of the earth to the end of the earth, and there you will work for gods of others. Come on, man. Come on, my naga. Who you working for? Who sent you? Who you working for? Who sent you? Who you working for the gods of others? Let's go. Oh, I got to go to this Christmas party. I got to. Let go, man. Let go, man. And among those nations, let me back it up. Let me back it up. Verse 63, and it will be just, it will be that just as Hawa rejoiced over you to benefit you and multiply you, so Hawa will cause them to rejoice over you to make you perish and to destroy you, and you will be torn from a upon the ground to which you come to possess it. Hawa will scatter you among all the peoples from the end of the earth to the end of the earth and there you will work for gods of others whom you did not know. You or your fathers didn't know this this flow they got. You know what I'm saying? This is something else, man. This is a remix. You dig? Let's go. You or your fathers of wood and stone, and among those nations you will be tranquil. There will be no rest for the soles of your feet, where Hawa will give you a trembling heart, longing of eyes, and suffering of soul. Your life will hang in the balance, and you will be frightened night and day, and you will not be sure of your livelihood. In the morning you will say, who can give back last night? And in the evening you will say, who can give back this morning? For the fright of your heart that you will fear, that you will fear in sight of your eyes that you will see. Hawa will return you into Egypt, bondage in ships on which road I said to you, you shall never see it again. Man, you weren't, you weren't supposed to see bondage again, my naga. And there you will be offered yourselves for sales to your enemies as slaves and maidservants, but there will be no buyer. In other words, no one can redeem you because you are already in captivity. Only Hawa can redeem you. Only Hawa is your salvation. These are the words of the covenant that Hawa commanded Moses to seal with the children. It's been sealed, my naga. It's been sealed in the land of Moab besides the covenant that he sealed with them in Harib. Man, that's Deuteronomy 28. Let's go. And just for fun, I want to dig on this uh, one more script. Pull it up right here, though. Hold up, man. We on a war path, man. We on a war path, man.
All right, yeah, I'm looking for a different translation, man. Because we, you know what I'm saying, we we read this, man, in the prison, man. We read this behind behind the wall, and we found a translation that really linked. Of Deuteronomy 28, I believe. So, I thought it might have been another um, chapter. But let's check it out. Deuteronomy 28. Let's go 28, 28. They say this is the Israel Bible. All right, all right. I'm going to put all the links, uh, you know. You got the link, so just click it. Do it like this because he's switching it up on me. Check out Deuteronomy 28 and 12 in this particular version right here. Because it talks about the undertakings. Alright, you know, I just want to see the difference in the translation. Because we're going to talk undertakings, we're going to talk being a creditor, we're going to talk being a debtor. Alright, we, we already mentioned in Deuteronomy 28, you know what I mean, how you'll uh, be, be the head if you listen, you'll be the creditor. You'll be the creditor to the nations, right? Instead of being the debtor. So when you go into the courthouse, they are automatically giving you the role, the assumed role of the debtor, right? Now you're walking in paying a debt when you are the creditor of the whole system, even now. You know what I'm saying? Because your birth certificate literally backs the whole system as a primary creditor. You did by default since the 20s to, you know, 29, 1929. So let's try, uh, let's look over at Deuteronomy 28, uh, verse 12. And I'm going to read it here, and then I'm going to read it in this Israel Bible version here. But I know there's a few different versions that say something pretty compatible. Let's go. Okay, so here it says, Deuteronomy 28.12, Hawah shall open for you his storehouses of goodness, the heavens to provoke rain for your land in all its time, and it, and to bless all your handiwork. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Hawah shall place you as the head and not the tail. All right, so what does it say? This version, pull it up, man. Click the link below in this Israel Bible version. Hawaii will open for you the bounteous, the bounteous store, the heavens, to provide rain for your land in season and to bless all your undertakings, which is, which is a legal term. You will be creditor to many nations, but debtor to none. So keep that in mind as we talk primary creditor and all this is that you are the creditor and they even created this 
you know, uh, synthetic matrix, still making you the creditor, but this time you don't know you're the creditor. So they can have a whole other credit account, a whole other charged account, you know what I mean, and you don't even know about it, but you're still the creditor like the creator created you as the, cre the creditor, not the debtor, the head, not the tail. So let's get back into this Thaddeus Culpepper, you know what I'm saying, rendition of the habeas corpus. And uh, again, email me music at 432thedrop.com to get a copy if you're serious for it. And I might end up putting it on the site anyway, but you know, I'll think about it, man. You know, some, you know, everything ain't got to be on that. Certain things could be more personal, you dig? So let's get it. So we're talking habeas. Get part one because we went over the definition of habeas and all that. And literally we just got, you know, it means you have a body. Now whether it's a dead body or a corpse or you're coming back to life like Ezekiel Valley of Dry Bones, it's up to you. you know? It's up to you. You do you. We on the warpath though. Look out for that press the job, man. Part 40. You know, I just been uh, marinating really with this in the last couple of weeks, man. So, you know, I was deciding when to share, you know, when my Ruach was like, all right, it's time, man. Because um, it takes a lot out of me to relive this, you know, nightmare of a situation, man. But I know that, you know, it's all a testimony. It's for you, you know what I mean? So I could talk. You know, Sam and Yon Rivers, and, you know, we can talk, uh, you know, es Estebanico, and although that is a personal connection, that's not, you know, what I'm living in my life. You know, this is what I'm living in my life. This is literally what I witnessed, man. So, you know, it, it's, it's a it's a whole other energy you got to work your way up to. So over these last couple of weeks, I had to work my way into, you know, saying, all right, you know what I mean, here's here's how we're going to get it. Let's go. You know what I mean? So, hey, hi, all praise to Creator. You know what I mean? For the experience, you know what I mean? To be a witness. And uh, I just pray that it adds to what you're witnessing. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. So we left off on page six, number 46. However, the awakening of the, city, of the citizen defendant rarely occurs and the trust is charged. So... Right before that, we said typically the testa, testamentary trust officiants, typically the testamentary trust officiants or the clerk of the court, you know what I mean, are anxious to conclude matters in the case because were the were the civilly dead Fourteenth Amendment debt citizen to awaken. I know that's a long way of saying the nausea, but that's basically really what this is about. Yeah, other. Folks are suffering under this umbrella of, of servitude as well. But it's really all about captivity of the Naga, all right? Because you control the dragons. <laughs> you control reality. You control the future. You control the past. And everybody else is collateral damage. But you're the main collateral because you have the gold to begin with. Everybody who is collateral in this system, yeah, they're collateral. Their lives are collateral. And, and they fall under the oppression, so to speak, but they don't have the gold, they don't have the inheritance, the land ain't theirs, so because this is directly connected to you and your land, and your collateral, right, it's, it's your things, it's your stuff, alright, so let's go, so, typically the testamentary trust officiants are anxious to conclude matters in the case because were the civilly dead 14th Amendment debt citizen to awaken and realize what was truly transpiring. He or she would reclaim their rightful position. Talking to you because we're talking about the Hebrew connection to the Americans. He's seeing clearly while he's typing this. So I just want to read this because he literally, you know what I'm saying, is coming fresh off of a three hour session of reading, you know what I'm saying, Lost Tribes and Promised Lands. You dig? reading about Preston John, then he goes on and says, I'm ready. And then we bring our stools up. We got a couple people blocking the door just so nobody really jams us up. I mean, it's prison, you know what I'm saying? And then we all work together. 
for that extra hour or two hours to get it done. Sometimes we try to, you know what I'm saying, get out the sales a little early so we can get it done. So you might have a homie who is in the, uh, who's a food server, all right? But the food server, Sellies, also get out when the food servers get out. You know what I mean? So my Selly, RJ, became a food server, man. My homie from Compton. So now he's up, you know, and then they could open the cells early because RJ got to get out. So that means drop can get out. You know what I'm saying? So now we can work, man. I mean, this is what the bros that tried was doing just to get to you because they might not ever have a chance to get to you. So you're living it, man. You're witnessing it through me, through us. Let's go. So he or she could reclaim their rightful position as trustee of the trust and as creditor to the charging party, right? That's the invader. That's that's the corporation, the colonial. That's the charging party and change the outcome of the proceeding demonstrably. However, the awakening of the citizen defendant rarely occurs, man. The Naga rarely wakes up. So... And the trust is charged, so they just charge the trust. But they're using your vessel now. They're not even charging it. They're not even just taking it out your your account. They're making you work it, work for it. <laughs> By having your vessel warehouse, they're charging the trust. But they're also killing two birds and one, with, with uh, one stone. Because while they're charging the account, they're also taking you away from your family and breaking your family up. So they're really hitting you on many different levels and layers at the same time you may never recover from, man. Some of these brothers, man, what's been done in LA ain't never gonna recover from. So it's not like they could just charge their account and they could still be with their families, but they gotta, you know, fulfill the real goal, which is to break up the families, break up the houses. It's war, man. We on the war path, man. Wakey, wakey, man. Wakey, wakey, man. Dig on it, man. You just woke up to this. I know, I know, I know. I mean, literally. You just were born, right? You know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, you, you, you just, you were just born. How would you know where you at? How would you know you're on a war path? Because you were born on a war path, man. I'm talking to Kumsa, Hawata, Dragon Canoe, Moshe, man. Let's get it. Let's go. 47. By warehousing the body of the debtor citizen, the United States accomplishes two things. All right, here we go. I said two, kill two birds with one stone. Let's go. First, once warehouse, the inmate's ability to communicate with the outside world is severely restricted. This limits the United States' risk that the warehouse citizen, our brothers, our Nagas, would reclaim his creditor status reclaim his creditor status what does it say deuteronomy 28 12 hawaii will open for you his bounteous store the heavens to provide rain for your land and season and to bless all your undertakings that's your that's your things <laughs> you will be creditor to many but debtor to none you're a creditor to many by nature so you have to reclaim your creditor status which is forever based on your inheritance by naga but you think you're from africa you don't understand you're the aboriginal or the original amaru khan somebody asked me well how how do you identify brother what do you say you say you're native american man i'm the hebrew amaru khan man i'm the khan man i'm i'm from the khan dynasty man who are you All right, I'm the Ibaru Amaru Khan, man. Who is you, man? Because I know who I am. I was just found here. I'm the creditor, not the debtor. I'm the head, not the tail. Let's read about it. By warehousing the body of the Naga, the United States accomplishes two things. First, once warehoused, the inmate's ability to communicate with the outside world is severely restricted. They can't get this drop. That's why we got to, you know, go through these situations to connect to them there to get the message to create a habeas corpus, 13 pages on a typewriter, work together just to share it back with you. We had to go through all this just to communicate between the prisoners, the captors, and you. 
And we're working on that, man. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna streamline that because we can't keep going through this every time just to connect to our brothers and sisters beyond the wall. So the inmate's ability to communicate with the outside world is severely restricted. This limits the United States' risk that the warehouse citizen will reclaim his creditor status, head not to tail, and expose the crime committed by the government. That's where the habeas comes in. I've been unlawfully detained. It's criminal to have me as collateral and not inform me that my life's in danger, my children's life's in danger because you've already forfeited our lives as collateral for the corporation, making us by default primary creditors of the corporation, not the debtor, the head, not the tail. And now you're enslaving the head and choosing the secondary creditor, the Federal Reserve, over us, the primary creditors? You're siding with the feds, the Federal Reserve. Why? Because you are the Federal Reserve. And just as the Federal Reserve ain't got nothing to do with them, the corporation the United States, for real, for real, neither do you. Neither do whoever wants to run this thing from afar or from a near. But we're putting it all on lean. We're putting it all on notice. We know who we are now. And we see clearly. We've gone through personal experiences to expedite that situation. All praise. Our Hawa. Let's get it from here. Secondly, by warehousing the true creditor, the United States can make more money from the inmate when truly it owes the defendant far more than the debtor citizen could ever owe it. Do you hear that? I'll say it again. By warehousing the true creditor, you. The United States Corporation makes more money from the inmate when truly it owes the defendant. It owes, it owes you far more than you can ever owe it. Because it's charged your account so many times by now. There's not enough charges you can put on me to equivalent, <laughs> you know what I mean, what you have already, you know, charged. You know what I'm saying? You can't create it, you can't create enough new charges to equal which you've already charged, man. I mean, you're bankrupt. You're you're unsolvent, insolvent. You can't pay back any debt at all. There's no goal, just our lives at stake. And we are putting you on notice, habeas staff. You know, this is what we're digging on, you know, letting you know we're primary creditors. Now you know that we know. So that's what the martial law thing kicks in. It's like, all right, once they wake up, this shit is going to be over with, and we're going to have to control these motherfuckers. That's what the Rex 84 comes in at. You know what I'm saying? That's what the King Alfred's plan comes in at. Connect the two together, because this shit can't go on for long. You can't keep enslaving the primary creditors for long. Pretty soon, it's going to be habeas all day. Everybody, if everybody filed a habeas, the Secretary of Treasury, that's why I said uh, before I said Secretary of State, controls the uh the, the uh government funds and it's, it's the secretary of treasury so really that's the kahuna right there it's the secretary of treasury right that's the one that is saying oh shit well they they know i don't want a bigger problem so let me release inmate you know nine two one six two two four whatever you know what i mean because i don't want a bigger problem we've already charged this account enough you know let's release let's let's release that debtor you know, since they know that the credit, and these are things that can possibly spark a change, man. I mean, you know, we don't know till we know, but we're sharing the info. Forty-eight, taken together, it becomes readily apparent that the United States, so racked with debt owing to the secondary creditor, the Fed, the Reserve, seeks to make money in any way imaginable, including incarcerating its own prime creditors. 49. It is significant to note at this juncture the absolute wickedness of the scheme herein expounded. Having already pledged the life and soul of the people, converting it for fiat currency from a third party, the government thinks nothing of further debilit debilitating its soul or stolen collateral. So again, the government thinks Nothing of further debilitating its stolen collateral when it immobilizes the body, immobilizes the body 
belonging to the mortgaged soul pursuant to secret admiralty and law merchant proceedings, man. That is got the drive, man. Let's go. 50. Thus, what it truly, what is truly owed the debtor citizen at the time of any charge brought by the conflicted government is, is full disclosure of the nature of the proceedings and the defendant's true status along with an accounting of the debt the government owes defendant to date. So when you put them on notice, you're, you're saying, look, man, I, I want a full accounting. You know, since you created this corp, I'm going to take control of it. You know, it's not really taking, you know, responsibility for them, but it's taking control of your account. Or you can let them control, you know what I'm saying? Thus, what is truly owed the debtor citizen at the time of any charge brought by the conflicted government is full disclosure of the nature of the proceedings and the defendant's true status along with an accounting of the debt the government owes defendant today. How much do they owe you anyway? How much have they charged your account anyway? Along with an accounting of the debt the government owes defendant to date. That's what the habeas is. Chief among the various aspects of the accounting due the citizen is a valuation of the most precious service provided by the creditor's credits, creditor citizen. To make a person's asset at risk by pledging it as collateral for a loan. That's what they did in the 30s. Man, chief among the various aspects of the accounting do the citizen is a valuation of the most precious services provided by the creditor citizen to place a person's asset at risk by pledging it. So your life is pledged as collateral for a loan is one thing. To pledge the asset of another for a loan without the asset owner's knowledge is a crime. So the first thing you're doing is saying, look, man, a crime has been committed. And if you don't acknowledge this, then you're just full of shit. This is fact. So all I'm doing is kicking facts and how, you know, what you do with it and how you research it. Is, is, you know, that's it. You know what I mean? Again, you know, I'm, you know, this is just a personal experience that I'm sharing. You know, I didn't even, like I said, I don't even want to put it on the website. Like, this is his 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 thing. He wanted to share, so we're gonna share it like this. Let's go. To pledge the asset of another for a loan without the asset owner's knowledge is a crime, but to pledge the very life of another as collateral. So it ain't like it ain't just like they're pledging your assets and you don't know about it. That that would be crime enough if they said. Everything you own, your land, your house, is all been put up as collateral. You will be living. But if I say your life's been put up as collateral, your children's life has been put up as collateral, are you living? How you feeling about that? How's that sitting with you? Because we could read books all day, but for real, you're collateral. You're in captivity. And this is just one other way of viewing it. So to pledge your, your stuff is one thing, but to pledge your life, man, but to pledge the very life of another as collateral for a loan is unconscionable. <laughs> man, there is no price that could be paid to satisfy the debt owed to that unwitting pledge. There is no price that could be paid to satisfy the debt. They can't pay their own debt since the 30s, right? That's what the whole birth certificate thing comes into play. But can they even pay you back for real? So we over here, you got me in captivity. My vessel was being warehoused, and you owe me all this money, and you're talking about some charges that you're putting up on me. Imagine if you owe me $5,000, and I put you in captivity for $5, and said, man, you owe me $5. I'm like, nigga, you owe me $5,000. You owe me five, five hundred thousand. You owe me five million. But you say, no, you, uh, yeah. but you owe me five dollars, and I, I'm gonna warehouse you for that. 
You got to admit that you owe these people their money, man. You got to admit that these people are being used as primary creditors and collateral. Let's go. 51. By assuming a role of, of par parents, patri, P-A-R-E-N-S, pat P-A-T-R-I-A-E, over the lives of its constituency, the government usurps the sovereignty of the people. The people of the United States are the progenitors of the Constitution. This is how you spell the parents per pre. I mean, he, he's getting fancy, but he's doing it for Drop Nation. So, you know, pause it, read it, do your thing. Make sure there's not enough light. Make sure we can see clear. So by assuming a role of what's, what he's calling parents, patri, over the lives of his constituary, the government usurps the sovereignty of the people. And I'm actually going to look that up. I want to dig on that a little bit more. Let's stay here in Wikipedia. Because we on a war path, man. It's a frequency war. I don't know, y'all look like they shut my internet out again, man. They're going to try to make me reboot this thing again. I told y'all, man. I just got it working. Started doing this drop. And now they shut me down again. That's the third time. And I think I'm only about 25% uploaded. That's why it takes so long sometimes, man. So we really fighting a good fight, man. It's a frequency war, man. <laughs> you, if you're at war, you're at war. If you're on a war path, you already are on a war path. You can't ignore it. If you're on a war path, you're at war. And they let you know, because you can't upload nothing to YouTube without them shutting you down, slowing you up, trying to detour you, you know what I'm saying, detour you, deter you from doing whatever, man. It's all good. Now I can't even get my drums. It's all good, man. We on the warp path, man. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? But you let me know, man, when you uh, find on Parents Patre, P-A-R-E-N-S-P-A-T-R-I-A-E. Cause you got the drop. I ain't got no internet right now. They shut me down, man. But I'm gonna keep coming. Let's go, man. Let's go. I mean, that's why it's good to have hard copies. You know, to actually have it. So they they shut your net down. Imagine if I was just trying to read this off a website. But because I had an actual life experience that I shared, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, digging on these false witnesses, man. Because this is all about false witnesses. You know what I mean? And... Without the actual paperwork, I wouldn't. Even, I, I would have to stop doing a video right now. You know what I mean? But I'm recording on my phone camera here, man, and I got actual hard copy. You know, <laughs> so uh, we can keep the uh, dice rolling, man. We can keep the water flowing. Let's go. This where we're okay. There we go. So again, by assuming the role of parents, patre over the lives of its constituency, the government usurps the sovereignty of the people. The people of the United States are the progenitors of the Constitution. The United States government is no longer de jure, but de facto. So de jure and de facto are two different things, and you can look that up. De jure and de facto. Oh, man. I at least can get some water flow, you know what I mean? Because they shut out my internet, you know what I mean? Brother got a reboot for the third time tonight. Dropping this drop. Hopefully Chef Candy's going to reboot. I told her if it goes out again, you know, re reboot me. You know, so it takes teamwork to get this drop to you. Chef Candy has been on internet reboot call, you know what I'm saying? So she's working for the tribe, and if you don't see her, you know, she's behind the scenes working for the tribe. And uh, if we get her internet back, you know, it's all because Chef Candy started unplugging some stuff, man. Let's go. At least we got some water flowing. A lot of water.
It's all good. It's all good. You go through all this. And after all this you go through, they still want to fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? They still just want to sh shut you down. And that's why, that's another reason why I took about almost two weeks or two weeks or so between drops. Is I wanted to see if I had any internet issues without dropping something on YouTube. And here I am, two weeks later, no internet issues. But now I got to reboot three times tonight. Just because I'm trying to drop part one of this two part, you know, drop. So let me get through this to make sure it's only two parts, man. Let's go. The United States government is no longer de jure, but de facto, it can be viewed no other way. As a Chapter 11 debtor in possession, it has demonstrated through its willingness to wield power under any circumstances, even when demonstrably and noticeably conflicted, that is, in no moral position to continue operation, man. And then judge us and put us in jail for life, man. Free Phineas, man. Free, free the real ones, man. 52. In this de facto position, the United States has steeped its operations in fraud, artifice, deception, actual malice, and treachery. And this, on a constant, regular basis, one only needs to observe the exponential deficit rate and the U.S. incarceration rate as against the rest of the world to reach this conclusion. And we've just been digging on the private prisons and the minimum occupancy clauses in Arizona as a hundred percent that they got to keep every bed filled 100% of the time or these private prisons could sue the state man and what's it like in your city when these private prisons get I mean it's just it's just the bank man it's just the account we're talking accounts we're talking creditors versus debtors let's go 53, as mentioned above, with the combined action of debt paper, Moneta Juno charged at interest, taxed, issued without enough to cover the interest, and paired with fractional reserve banking by member banks, the debt owed could never be repaid. I mean, the brother Thaddeus is just kicking this off the dome. Let's go. 54, the United States was well aware that the Federal Reserve scheme once begun could never be repaid again at the juncture of the time for debate on the question charles Lindbergh notably remarked that the bill might not destroy the country and its citizens today or tomorrow but he remarked that at some fracture or future point the action created by this act was certain to destroy us all 55 other actions and factors may be noted regarding the irresponsibility and wretchedness of the government, its treatment of its creditors during detention, the extreme measures taken to obscure the, the deception, theft, and conversion, and the coy manner in which its agents assure moral authority over those it prosecutes. This arrangement is too ridiculous to bear. The conditions created by the Federal Reserve Arrangement and the present state of the government's use of the Constitution and statutory crime provisions are the proximate cause of all crime committed in the United States. Petitioner incorporates, by reference, all of the after described provisions herein and claims the following civil rights claims pursuant to 42 USC, United States Code, uh, 1983. A based upon the foregoing, the above captioned persons, their agents, successors, heirs, assigns, working in concert with and as agency with all necessary others have used and are presently using color of law to deprive and violate petitioner's constitutional rights declared in the Declaration of Independence and secured in the Bill of Rights expounded at common law including the Holy Bible, the Magna Carta, and the authorized version of the Apocrypha. Because that's what we was digging on. He was coming to my spot, you know what I'm saying, to borrow the Apocrypha, man. You know what I mean? So let's go. And all statutes and public law enacted prior to 1938. 
the above named persons have violated petitioner's Fourth Amendment right to be secure in his person, houses, papers, and effects because the above named person, agents for the United States, have used subterfuge to steal, convert, and conceal the fact that the government pledged petitioner's life and person personally or personal personality personality as collateral. I think it's his personality uh, or personality right, as collateral for the issuance of debt paper without petitioner's knowledge. All right. So the the government pledged your life as collateral for the insurance of their money with the Federal Reserve for that loan. This is sick, man. Alright? And this is reality. Red pill, blue pill, man. We love the KB, the hijack, and Cezanne, man. Get it every Tuesday night, 6 o'clock Pacific, man. Everybody surfing away with the heat the squad. Keep doing that, because that's reality. Because this YouTube thing ain't gonna last long. You see how they shut me down just for trying to drop a video. Two weeks, no internet problems. I dropped one, you know, a couple hours ago. I've had to reboot three times. You see what's happening with YouTube, you know what I mean? So, how is it that you can upload on a social media website and it shuts down your entire infrastructure or your entire Wi-Fi connection? How does your Wi-Fi connect to uploading to YouTube? We're talking the same people. We're talking the same thing. They don't want the information getting to you. But we fight through the static. We keep the water flowing. This ain't just a, it ain't just a t-shirt, man. We keep the water flowing, man. Hey, huh? So they pledge your life as collateral for the insurance of the money, the debt paper, without your knowledge by petitioning or pledging petitioner as collateral for debt. The United States intentionally place petitioner's life and body at risk through the prospect of U.S. default on the terms of the credit issue from the Federal Reserve. So whoever owns the feds owns you and your children. And they make you sign them away with birth certificates. Further compounding the crime, the United States has now brought petitioner up on charges for the statutory crime through admiralty and outside the true judicial power extension set forth in Article 3, Section 2. Simultaneous with the filing of this charge, the United States has intentionally failed to discharge its duty to petitioner by not disclosing to petitioner the nature and cause of the charge brought against the petitioner, the true status that petitioner holds vis-a-vis -vis the government, that of creditor, and by failing to present petitioner with an accounting of the debt secretly created by the government in petitioner's name and now presently owing to petitioner, thus petitioner now may readily prove with the foregoing that the above named agents of the government stole and converted his person, houses, papers, and effects Sounds like the dumb diversions. Kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, movable and immovable goods. Fell. Yeah. Thus petition now readily may readily prove with the foregoing that the above named agents of the government stole and converted his person, houses, papers, and effects with petitioner's knowledge, without petitioner's knowledge, and through subterfuge and malice. B, based upon the foregoing and incorporating by reference all the above, the above, the above captioned persons, their agents, successors, here's agents, and assigns working in concert with and as agents with all necessary others have used and are presently using color of law to deprive and violate petitioner's Fifth Amendment rights. The above named persons have violated petitioner's Fifth Amendment right to due process because they have taken his life, liberty, and property on two separate occasions, at least without his knowledge or consent. First, through the mechanism of the Federal Reserve Arrangement as set forth above, the United States have pledged the petitioner's life, liberty, and property as collateral for the insurance of fiat paper at the occasion of petitioner's birth and at other times, placing petitioner's very life at risk through the prospect of default. They default, they come for your grill. 
but with her why let it be real you know what i mean then taking the occasion to create capital to satisfy the ever-growing debt owed to its secondary creditor the agent of the government used subterfuge artifice malice deception and theft through unconstitutional use of statutory crime provisions equitable compelled performance admiralty law merchants maritime garnishments and attachment process csd csdk they trust we got that before csdk they trust and testamentary trust proceedings to covet steal and conceal the theft and abuse of petitioners life liberty and property further compounding the foregoing the agents of the united states name here herein taking petitioners private property namely his life liberty and property and collateralized it for the sake of creation of public debt paper not only without compensation but without his consent or knowledge secondarily after pledging his life as collateral for the insurance of debt paper to be used publicly the agents of the government named herein have taken petitioners life liberty and property through a fraudulent use of the 13th amendment making it seem on the surface that petitioners incarceration and forced servitude are and were the result of proper due criminal process and or conviction man you got you got the captives writing this man with no legal book they just kicking it man this bro didn't have a legal book open he was just writing this based on the drop you know what i'm saying based on what was spewing inside of his own self you know what i mean and who he was becoming he started keeping sabbath with us man he was the main one excited to keep sabbath so he started seeing clearly and applying some legal proud with some some education that he got and, and but now laser beaming it Eleazar style you know what I'm saying let's go C based upon the foregoing and incorporating by reference all the above the above captured persons their agents successors heirs agents and the signs working in con concert with and as agents with all necessary others have used and are presently using color of law to deprive and violate petitioners eighth amendment right to reasonable bail the Eighth Amendment declares that excessive bail should not be required. However, through its exclusive legislative power over the district and its ability to regulate commerce, the United States passed uh, 3142, giving magistrates, magistrates the ability to determine whether or not petitioner was entitled to bail without any consideration of the Eighth Amendment rights required that reasonable bail always remain available. And now they set your bail something crazy. When I was fighting all of, all that time, man, I, I finally got a bail. <coughs> Before this six months, I've been fighting this for years. So, I had to do, uh, what, three weeks back in June 2012. Then I finally had one trial. Then I had the other trial. Then I had an appeal. And then I got on bail pending appeal. And I was on bail for like, I don't know, six or seven years. On bail before this final situation happened you know what I'm saying and finally I got sentenced to 10 years probation and I said fuck that I ain't doing 10 years probation one I'm innocent and two that's a hell of a long time and three I'm innocent and four I'm the primary creditor you know what I mean so now we all get into all this but you know what I'm saying during this time of bail it was like a it was a $50,000 equity bond that I had to put up in order to get all that you know space to fight or else I wouldn't have never even started doing the drop like if this didn't happen between me and my bro in real time I would have never even thought about 432 drop any of this stuff this literally course corrected my entire you know design you know what I'm saying this literally is my design you know what I mean so you know but we supposed to have rights to not have excessive bail fifty thousand dollars equity that means you got to put a house up man you know what I'm saying? So, who, you know what I mean? It takes a lot of resources and family working together to do stuff like that. And I got a strong core. You know, that's why I am who I am. I'm pedigree. I come from a nucleus of freedom fighters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mama, mama been doing it all her life. Papa been doing it all his life. So, you know, you bring a fight to us, all you do is switch us back into our, our nature. You know what I mean? And some people ain't got that. But when you are faced with it and you do got it, then you know you ain't got to fear nothing, man. Because it, it just is what it is. At some point, the bubble got to burst. Let's go. So you're supposed to have a right to 
to reasonable bail, all right, always available. D, based upon the foregoing and incorporating all the above, the above captioned persons, their agents, successors, heirs, agents, and signs working in concert with and as agents with all the necessary others have used and are, or, and are presently using color of law to deprive and violate petitioners' Ninth Amendment rights, man. So all, the, all this is being violated. This is what the habeas is about. I, I put you on notice, man. I'm being unlawfully detained, and here's the violations. Namely, the United States has construed the 14th Amendment to be one that denies the true American citizen. Construes the 14th Amendment to be one that denies the true American citizen. Who's the Amaru Khan? That's why it's about you, my nigga. Petitioner herein of his 8th Amendment right. Petitioner herein of his 8th Amendment right to bail. The agents of the United States. Engage in a practice used herein against the petitioner that routinely denies defendants bail. So when I was in there for that six months, I had petitioned for my right to bail the same way I was on bail for that six, seven years, and I had no violations for for all that time, six, seven years. I had no violations, and then this time I get remanded because I fight my ten years probation. I go back to resentencing, and this time the judge says. We'll go to jail for six months then, since you don't want to take my six, my ten years probation, and remands me on the spot to six months incarceration. Now, of course, I'm, I'm appealing, yeah, I'm fighting, so I should get bail pending appeal like I was granted for those other six, seven years, and I had no violations, I got no priors, nothing, and yet my bail was denied twice this time around. After I proved to you, if you needed proof. That I wasn't running and going nowhere. I, <laughs> that I'm not a flight risk. They gave me no. They gave, they gave me no reason for denying it, but it got denied twice. They didn't even give me fifty thousand dollar bail again. They didn't even want no money. They just denied it like I'm some life hardened criminal or something like that. So this is what he's talking about. It says the agents of the United States engage in a practice used herein against the petitioner that routinely denies defendants bail. The agents of the United States employ 3142 and the factors set forth therein to determine whether the defendant is entitled to bail and whether the defendant should be detained. When engaging in this practice, the prosecution and the magistrate make no mention or pay no attention to the dictates of the Eighth Amendment because both are aware that the United States is proceeding in admiralty, commerce, law merchant, employing maritime garnishment processes, and using compelled performance or statutory contractual provisions through equity, and this all being accomplished through deft use of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the 14th Amendment as mentioned. This brother's coming from the heart bone, man, through the mind bone, man. I'm witnessing it. I'm just sitting here just typing. He's like, yeah, man, so what do you think about this? All right, cool. Then we talk about this. How can we have this? All right, yeah, cool, cool. He just, he, <laughs> he just wanted the inspiration, man. Let's get it. The false construction and use of the 14th Amendment also denies petitioner of his 4th and 5th Amendment rights as set forth above. D, based upon the forego foregoing and incorporating by reference all of the above, the above captioned person, their agents, successors, heirs, agents, and the signs working in concert with and as agents with all necessary others. Let's go. This is part two, man. Let's go, man. Let go, man. We on a war path, man. Let's go. It's a frequency war, man. It's a frequency war. Let's get it. So through the use of 3142 and, well, let's back it up, back it up. Working in concert with and as agents with all necessary others have used and continue to use and are presently using color of law to deprive and violate petitioner's 13th Amendment right to freedom with involuntary servitude and slavery. Involuntary servitude, what I'm telling you is going on in camps. Let's go. Through use of 3142, and prosecution of its creditors with malice as means to eliminate its creditors and the risk of exposure of the United States Federal Reserve Scheme. 
the agents of the United States herein have brought and continue to bring as in this action criminal prosecutions using statutory contractual provisions compel performance through default admiralty commerce law merchant maritime garnishment process of artifice and actual concealment to gain conflicted void judgments against defendants the agents of the United States then use this false judgment as a means to extract involuntary servitude from petitioner herein slavery justifying such imposition to the public as punish punishment for crime they're working for free for punishment for crime you know what I mean uh, e incorporating all the foregoing the agents of the United States herein together with all necessary others are using article 1 section 8 clause 17 and clause 3 also with the 14th amendment so get you a copy of these articles of uh, incorporation and, you know what I mean the old constitution declaration of independence get you a copy of this stuff because we had to get one sent in man I love to ship cannon she actually sent in the declaration of independence constitution so that you know we can you know fact check what, what was going on you know what I mean because with that with that computer they got in there they got a little law library but they don't even have the constitution in that mug they don't have the declaration of independence so you can't even you know, see what's going on and how you can weave this this story together. You know, and that's for a reason. Incorporating all the foregoing, the agents of the United States herein, together with all necessary others, using Article One, Section Eight, Clause Seventeen, Clause Three, also with the Fourteenth Amendment, to deny petitioner of his Article Three, Section Two right to clear judicial power extensions, law, equity, admiralty, and maritime, and non or not extra constitutional extensions, statutory crime contract provisions, and statutory law. Additionally, using the same provisions set forth herein in this paragraph and through its arrangement with the Federal Reserve, the agents of the United States are and have been depriving petitioner of his constitutional right to a Republican form of government. Remember, your grandma and grandpa back then were all Republicans, man. It was a different form of government they were talking about than the Demon, democracy. Let's go. <clears throat> but now it's all flipped, right? Now it's all flipped. So this Republican form of government, through the bankruptcy of the United States and its agents, need to need to continually satisfy the dictates of the secondary or the Federal Reserve credit issuing creditor. These same agents of the United States, on behalf of their principal have made the Federal Reserve the true power. So the first creditor is supposed to have the true power. Now the secondary creditor has the true power based on this scheme, man. And they're all in on it. The people of the United States do not and cannot vote for leaders of the Federal Reserve. Who are you? Who are they? You wouldn't know them if you was passing them in a grocery store. Who are they? There's no award shows for them. And as soon as we talk about it, we just forget it, like, yeah, all right, whatever, I'll never know. How's that cool? How's that cool that there's a veil that you can't look beyond? There's a veil you can't see. You're paying taxes to this veil. You have no power because of this veil. But your power is within you, and they can't stop that. That's the unveiling. I mean, that's the, that's the apocalypse. It's, it's the unveiling. Let's go. Through the bankruptcy, the United States and its agents need to continually satisfy the dictates of the secondary credit issuing creditor. These same agents of the United States, on behalf of their principal, have made the Federal Reserve the true power and representatives of the people of the United States. Do they represent you? You can't even vote for them, right? The people of the United States do not and cannot vote for leaders of the Federal Reserve. And it is an, in, and it is an entity separate and wholly apart from the United States. It's separate and wholly apart. But it's the power. It has the power. Wake up, man. We waking up at war. If this is going on, and we're the ones in captivity, for the most part, man, in every city, it's the Nagas, then this is war against you. And you're just looking at it through the lens of a habeas corpus. You're looking at it through the lens of, of, of the creditor, not the debtor. Deuteronomy 28. Verse 12, let's go. Federal Reserve, all right, 
The true, the people of the United States do not and cannot vote for leaders of the Federal Reserve, and it is an entity separate and wholly apart from the United States, yet the same entity governs and, in fact, owns the people of the United States. Come on, man. It's 13 pages. We're on page 11. Let's go. We're doing good. F, based upon the foregoing and incorporating by references herein, all the above petitioner hereby states for the record the creditors and equity security holders claims made known to the Secretary of the Treasury. So again, not Secretary of State. What I mean is the Secretary of Treasury. By certified mail number. Right. These are blank spaces, you know what I'm saying, for you to fill in. You know what I mean? Because he, he was really typing this for, you know, the whole squad. You know what I mean? So, you know, you can get that copy. Hit me up, man. Music at 432thedrop.com. you serious about getting a copy of this, man. Music at 432thedrop.com. Additionally, petitioner herein restates petitioner's creditory and equity holders' request for trustee investigation to the acts, conducts, assets, liabilities, financial condition of debtor, the operation of the of the debtor's court and prosecutorial business and petitioner's notice and request that the Secretary of Treasury, trustee of the U.S. Chapter 11 reorganization, discontinue U.S. court and prosecutorial operations against petitioner insofar as the United States is biased, prejudiced, and malice against the same and acting and acting against petitioner to extinguish his creditor in equity positions to compromise his warrant his warranting officer status because not only are you a primary creditor but you're actually a warranting officer of the corporation to list petitioner as a debtor instead to extinguish his rights to payment to earn money from his warehousing which we just got we'll get a little discount hopefully back or well, we ain't got no head in that but on that first part, we got into the private prisons. Let's go. And to eliminate the possibility that petitioner would expose the United States commission of crime against petitioner at his birth and forward. This creditor and equity holder warranting officer report objection and request under 1106 and 1108, along with petitioner's pri uh, priority personal injury computation of damages. All right, so... Not only is this brother filing, you know, his petitioner's priority personal or uh, this, not only is he filing as a creditor and equity holder and a warranting officer, right? He's also objecting and requests along with the petitioner's priority personal injury computation of damages. So all the damages, that that's what you sue them for. That, that's what you sue the corporation for. That's what you say. Yo, man, not only did you make me a creditor without my, or a uh, collateral, and put my life in danger, by your default, someone else now owns me, the secondary creditor, not, not only is that criminal, not only is that evil, but you're going to have to, uh, you know, you're going to have to open up the books, now that I know I'm the primary creditor, this, this habeas, according to his brother Thaddeus, is so that you can open up the books, but make them open up this books on the account that they created at your birth from your birth certificate. This trust was created. And now you could request the trustee investigation to the acts, conducts, assets, liabilities, financial condition of the debtor, the operation of the debtor's court and the prosecutorial business and put them on notice and request that the Secretary of the Treasury, trustee of the U.S. Chapter 11 reorganization, discontinue the U.S. court and prosecutorial operations against you. You can't prosecute me. I'm telling the Secretary of Treasury that you can't prosecute me. Because you're going to have to show me, you know what I'm saying, the, the books. You're going to have to open up all these assets and liabilities, man, that's been going on in this account. And you owe me much more than I owe you based on your charges. Yeah, you can... Oh, I got these charges against you. We want to convict you of these charges. You are, <laughs> you can't be this dirty convicting people of charges. You can't owe them this much uh, fiat, you know what I'm saying, and then tell them that they owe you. But they flipping it based on ignorance. Where we at with it? 
So yeah, included with that, you got injury computation of damages, notice the trustee by certified mail, and also set forth therein, and that's all these bonds, you know what I'm saying, that Chef Candy sent in for the prisoners, for the captives, all these bonds Chef Candy sent in that we can make copies of and dig on. And this is, it means a lot when you are that isolated, that someone's working for you. You know what I'm saying? Working for the people, man. Working for the tribe. And I love Chef Kenny. I know that. Oh, yeah, you know, that should be automatic. But, nah, man, I mean, that really is automatic. You know what I'm saying? When you got real ones, man. And a hop to the sisters, man, that, uh, you know, hold down brothers in these situations. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. For real, for real. As mentioned, petitioner is a creditor, equitary, security holding him security holder and warranting officer in the operations that are the United States corporate instrumentality as a creditor petitioner has been harmed severely ain't you been harmed severely by its debtors fraudulent actions specifically the United States through agents pledged and did convert petitioners life for monetary value in exchange for the insurance of debt credit from the Federal Reserve through the Federal Reserve Act and others having hypothecated petitioner's life value and and securitizing it the United States through agents concealed the crime by failing to inform you the petitioner that such action had been taken against his life your life subjecting it to risk by volunteering it as collateral to the United States secondary creditor and later by seeking to prosecute charge judge and incarcerate petitioner through use of admiralty, maritime, equity, and statutory contracts with the commerce power in secret to gain an insurmountable advantage over the petitioner herein, all to eliminate petitioner as a potential risk to expose United States collusion with the Federal Reserve treason and to debilitate petitioner's hope and moral generally. With these things in mind, petitioner herein sets forth the statement of damages caused by the United States through its banking bankruptcy, judicial, and prosecutorial business operations. And then he, he went through putting his numbers down. You can have your own set of numbers because you're an infinite being. Again, I see, you know, 300 millions and, and other, other stuff. Let's see what he put down. So for A, the conversion, 44 years of concealed use. So he's 44, that's how much concealed use, right? I'm 39, that's how much concealed use. And conversion of petitioner's life valuation through pledge thereof by U.S. for third-party loan without petitioner's permission or knowledge, he put ten million dollars for trespass. Forty-four years of concealed trespass on petitioner's property without permission as a means to facilitate and effectuate said conversion. Five million. He just, he just putting down numbers on the air. You just putting down the numbers on the ass, cause, cause you're an infinite being. You have an infinite account. They've already taken all this stuff out. All right. Kidnapping. Number, a letter C. False imprisonment. How many days? However, at this time it was 23 days for him of, fa of being falsely held by a conflicted federal personal agent. Agency said three million. Somebody that probably has thousands of days might have another figure. False arrest. Uh, letter D, damages for false arrest, one million. Enslavement, involuntary servitude, 44 years of life unknowingly pledged as collateral. This entry and entry C above representing the cost of placement of special and general bonds pursuant to supplement rule E. Supplement rule E, look it up. I wish I had my internet, but look it up. You know what I mean? Supplemental rule E, that's $10 million. Fraud, concealed. Concealment of U.S. activities for 44 years, that's his age, $10 million. Attorney's fees and court costs. Attorney's fees and court costs to prosecute and or defend the above-mentioned actions approximately caused by the United States. So any, any court costs you might need, $3 million. Assault and battery being placed in fear and unlaw unlawfully touched by the hand of agents of, of the United States just for touching you. Two million dollars. Letter I, intentional infliction of emotional distress. Five million dollars. Loss of consortium. That means you separated from your, your wife or your husband or your people. 
23 days you separated from your from your contact with loved ones. At this time, it was 23 days for him. It could be whatever day. All right, deprived of meaningful contact with family, friends, loved ones. Two million dollars. See all that, man. He he he's just calling out shots because he's an infinite being and he has a infinite account. He's a trustee, warranting officer of his account. The bones, the habeas, the body. You have a body. Let's go. F, unclean hands based upon the foregoing and incorporating all the above. Petitioner herein declares that the United States as principal and its judicial and prosecutorial agencies' hands are unclean. 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 You can't judge us. You over there breaking the creator's laws. You came over here killing and stealing. Killing and stealing. You breaking all the laws. And now you want to have clean hands to judge those offspring, those prisoners of war. We are the offspring of the invasion. And now you want to judge us with statutory Admiral TC law. This is land, man. You found me on my land. Judge me on the law of the land that you breaking so you can't judge it because you got unclean hands. You brought us the new test, gave us a whole new God. Got our family reading out the new test to a whole new God, thinking it's the same God. This payback and the playback, man, the price is going up. The price is going up, man. And can you truly pay your way out of this? What's the most I say about it? Can you truly, you know, redeem yourselves from what you've done? Can you redeem yourselves, man? Is there an amount you can give the creator for this treachery, man? For for the lives of his children? Can anyone truly redeem themselves for harming your children? Everyone has seen, everyone has seen the massacre and everyone has seen the apocalypse, the, the Holocaust, the Amarokan Holocaust of the Negro. And, you know, many others are also suffering under this Holocaust. They witnessed the seed of the creator, they, they, they witness you go through it, my naga. <coughs> now, it's judgment time, it's judgment season. It's also redemption season, but it's their judgment season. And it's your redemption season. Because you're the head, not the tail, the creditor, not the debtor. Deuteronomy 28, 12, let's go. So your hands are unclean for the reasons said above and herein. And that said, hands cannot be used to bring clean actions or judge them clean, especially the actions set forth herein against the petitioner, against the naga. Unjust enrichment, H, based upon the foregoing, the incorporating, and incorporating all the above, petitioner declares that the United States has gained certain amounts through theft, stealing. What did they take from you? Dumb diverses, all your goods, movable and immovable, your kingdoms, your dukedoms, your principalities, they stole you. Amounts of theft of petitioner's identity, identity theft. So I, I got six months for, 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 for mail fraud. That's what you give somebody that you just got to stick them with something. But they wanted to get me for identity theft, but I fought that and I won. So the whole house of cards got to fall down because you just stuck me with mail fraud out of nowhere. Or because the credit card this was used, the postal service, but I'm not guilty of anything to do with that. But who's really guilty of identity theft? <laughs> petitioner declares that the United States has gained certain amounts through theft of, per of petitioner's identity and more without petitioner's knowledge, equity abhors unjust enrichment. Petitioner hereby declares that the United States must be ordered to disgorge those ill-gotten gains for wit. You got to pay up. Payback's in the playback. The price is going up. It's a frequency war. 
We're coming back awake. We're, we're coming back online. Things got to be settled. Let's see if you can settle your debt. Let's go. Based upon the foregoing and incorporating all the above herein, petition declares that the prosecutorial agency of the United States is perpetually and continually disqualified through the context of conflict set forth herein from bringing actions, this action especially, adver adversarial hearing requested pursuant to Supplement Rule E, based upon the foregoing and incorporating all the above petitioner hereby request an adversarial hearing pursuant to rule whereby petitioner may prove the false origination institution and continuation of the maritime garnishment process and detention herein used to prove that such process should be vacated herein and to require plaintiff government to put up security L3 journal 3 pack three judge panel <laughs> requested article 3 judges so he's requesting specific judges under the article 3 constitution not statutory judges but article 3 constitution judges he's, re he's requesting a three judge panel all right of article 3 judges last page man last page is this we're doing great man M petitioner has a security interest in these proceedings that true law true law and not color of law be applied herein as such, petitioner declares under, under penalty of perjury and verifies under the constitution of which his ancestors originated and ordained and under the laws of the state of California that the foregoing is true and correct. In bonds, petitioner accounted for the cost of bonds and the enslavement and false imprisonment entries above and technically speaking, said cost could be included and covered in and under the attorney's fee and cost entry so I think before I said that he was putting bonds for three million but obviously we added all that up and that's probably going to be 50 million at the end of the day he's going to cover that 50 million with these bonds that are already available on the government website when you're looking for them and you know what you're looking for petitioner accounts for the cost of bonds in the enslavement and false imprisonment entries above all right and technically speaking, said cost could be included in and covered in uh, why? <laughs> under the attorney's fees and cost entry. However, petitioner prefers that bond cost herein to set petitioner free from false imprisonment imposed by the United States be counted in the false imprisonment statement entry as those damages are personal injury damages and pursuant to Chapter 11 are to be treated as administrative expenses to be immediately paid by the trustee petitioner has attached a copy of the gsa and these are these bonds we're about to show you for the dismount the gsa performance and payment bonds sought to be posted in the underlying case herein attached also is the consent of surety affidavit and individual surety release of lien on real property that's you you're releasing your lien you're, you're putting a lien on this account release of lien on real property release you and release of personal property from escrow this is real because you're the this has to do with you and your things right? petitioner's ability to pay is based upon house joint resolution 192 public law 73-10's declaration of u.s payment of petitioner's debts dollar for dollar and petitioner's creditor equity surety security holder and warranting officer status within the bankruptcy combined with the computation of personal injury damages as as line item administrative expenses to be immediately paid by the trustee all those stated on form sf 28 which we'll get petitioner out of an abundance of caution restates it here the cost of these bonds are also listed in petitioners creditor and equity shareholders claim notice to the secretary of the treasury because that's who is, is calling the shots when it comes to you know what I'm saying you being warehouse trustee of the u.s trustee of the u.s debtor in possession chapter 11 bankruptcy to be sure and it says supplement the damages defamation reputation damage another 10 million for just damaging your death your uh, reputation all right just like they try to do even in my situation. All right, let's go. L, 
loss of earnings, wages, fees, five million. Grand total, sixty-six million dollars. Is it play play? Let's go. Thus petitioner an equity share of debt. Thus, petitioner and equity share of debtor U.S. of value yet ascertained in addition to the above computed personal injury damages for the creditor's claim in, in the U.S. Chapter 11 ongoing reorganization. Petitioner has more than sufficient surety for the bonds proposed to be posted in this particular case number. Alright, so this is real spill, man. A hob again. The brother Thaddeus, man. And again, this is a Shig Knight's lawyer, you know what I mean? For a while, you know, Shig, Shig Knight has many lawyers, man, uh, you know what I mean? But, you know, this is one of them. <laughs> and it was just amazing to see, you know what I mean? All the all the brothers, man, whether they was Bloods, Cribs, whether they was, you know, Muslims, whether they was Christian, you know, whatever the case is, just kind of come together behind one thing, man, and that's to address the situation as primary creditors to this corporation you know what I mean and you know it was his vision that we share it with Drive Nation specifically and it's also our vision for him to uh, come on live and have a great interview with us so much of how daddy is called pepper and like I said man uh, you know wifey was sending me in these, these forms this is a SF standard form 14 16 I'm just showing you know I'm just leading you to the water stuff to look for all right uh, maybe we'll also get a PDF of all this stuff too and put it on the, in the drop library so this is standard form 1416 what else we got what else we got this is a performance bond for other than con construction contract so you know just leading you to some of the bonds that he requested. This is uh, standard form 1418. And I'll let you know which ones that he said was the most important. This is real big. Release of personal property from escrow. You are the personal property you're asking to be released. You know. Release my personal self. Release my personal escrow. Release my stuff, man. Give my things back. Uh huh. Oh yeah, this is the Constitution of the United States that uh, Chef Candy sent in for us. So we got a copy of that. You know what I mean? That we can re we can uh, reference. You know. Chef Candy also sent us the Declaration of Independence. So they have that now at MDC. Because they can't get it in the library, in the law library. There is no Declaration of Independence. There is no Constitution. I mean, this is a real, a real spill situation. Application to replace personal residence card. I think we just kind of got this on the side, but I think maybe this was like another one that she sent in. But uh, you know, I don't think we use the residence card. What else we get? What else we get? And again, man, dozens of brothers got copies of all this. Consent of surety. This has to do, you know what I'm saying, with, again, with the escrow. This is a SF1414. When it talks about your surety, you know what I mean? But just, you know, research all that separately. Research all these separately so you know what we're talking about. And again, you want a copy of this 13 page habeas here man you know what I mean you want to copy this 13 page habeas um, I think about dropping it on the site but again I'm, I'm leaning more towards you know giving it to those that you know really really you know want to get a copy of this thing so it's not just you know there for you know at least we can monitor it a little bit better because this is our personal work you dig so we want to make sure you know it's going to the real ones not just to you know some uh, jam up Joneses, you know, out there to, you know, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But we'll think about it, we'll think about it. 
Just hit me up, man. All right, hit me up. That's all you gotta do. Ain't that hard. So we got a couple minutes. All right. We got a couple more for a couple minutes. This is the reassurance agreement for bonds, statute payment bond, SF274. So all these you can look up, and I will be working on getting this as a PDF so you can have it all in one place. I think the last one is this here. Okay, this is another uh, application permanent residence joint. So this is goes towards the other one. Right. I think that's it, man. Um, yeah, this OF91. Y'all, you know, back to the shorty. It's definitely a big one to get. And there are a couple more, you know, that you can look into, man. These are just special bonds. And these are all, this is all bonds. Like when you talk about bail bondsmen and all, these are all bonds. You know what I'm saying? This is all money. All you got to do is fill them out and issue it into your case number or whatever your account, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, apply it as you deem fit, as you.